I'm your host, Welcome 23. You're joining me for Blades of Light and Shadow, Chapter 2 of Lost and Legends. You reach the table of Al Alara, only to find the two townsfolk from your village, Constable Angus and his apprentice Grin, dead on the steps. Gods of mercy. Angus Grin. Oh no. Nia kneels down beside Angus's body, her eyes glimmering with tears, her lips smooth and silent prayer. A faint golden glow surrounds her, and a warm breeze rustles of the overgrown grass, but then fades away. I can't help them. They're gone. Beyond the light's reach. I can't believe this. We saw them alive just last night. With that adventure, Mal... You don't think? Mal didn't do this. I can't know for certain, but I don't think this is his way. There's nothing in it for him. Neither Angus nor Gren had anything worth stealing. Well, yeah, I agree. I don't think this was him. But then, where is he? And who did this? Scholar Vash paces around, shaking his head. Oh, this is an affront to the light. A blasphemy. Whoever is responsible has des desecrated a place of worship. A holy place. Rain, what should we do? <clears throat> I'm going to examine the area. Ooh, examine the bodies. The other one isn't popping up. In. Their wounds are bound to tell something. You kneel down, examining the blood-soaked slashes and Grin's tunic and all over her arms. She was shot with arrows multiple times from different bows, too, by the look of it. She must have suffered so much. And Angus, he went quickly. A single blow to the head, it looks like, with some sort of mace. The skull is nearly caved in. Whoever did this, they're strong as hell. So multiple attackers, and one of them is strong as hell. I'm not loving this at all. What do you... do you think that this has something to do with the relic? Speaking clearly now, what... what, what relic? I, I don't know, it, it's just something Mal said back in town. That he had a tip that there was some powerful relic, and he was gonna go find it. And it's true. I'd hoped it was just a myth, but by the gods and above and below it, it must be true. I believe there is an ancient hidden ar artifact in deep within this temple. Forgotten to time, relegated to legend. An onyx shard. Seriously? The onyx shards are are real? You've heard of them, Cade. What's he talking about? They're the last relics from the Shadow Court left behind after the Great War. Cursed artifacts of terrible power. Very, very, very bad stuff. I came upon the locations of the shards in an ancient text last year. Seeing these bodies here, I may not be the only one who knows their location. Please, if whoever did this is after the shard, we need to protect it. We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. You share a look with Kate, noting his reluctance, and put a reassuring hand on his shoulder, and then look back at Vash. We'll accompany you inside and to get the shard, but if we bump into whoever did this, we're all running. Understood? <clears throat> Let's hope we find it before they do. We lead the way through the main archway onto the temple ground. The rubble ch cloaked in moss and choked by mines. This place isn't the best shape, is it? Once it was majestic, regal, packed day and night. I went truly far and so far from the light. Nibble feels lifeless, with no sign of assailants. You see two pathways ahead, one branching left, the other one branching right. Something feels off. Be careful where you step. Rain, what should we do now? Hmm. <clears throat> we should look for traps? Or let you choose the way. You grew up in a temple. You know their layout better than I do. I'm not sure. I don't feel the lights pull in this place. I suppose we can try the left passage. Nia gingerly steps forward. Click. Nia, look out! You dive forward and tackle Nia to the ground as a spike shoots out of the wall. 
straight through the air where she had been standing. Pressure plate. One more second and you would have been skewered. You held Nia to her feet, and she steers at the spike now embedded in the wall. I suppose we should take the right path then? Yes, please. You follow the right path, which begins to slope downward, spiraling in on itself. Gods, how deep does this thing go? Only the top level of the temple was open to the public. The lower levels, the catacombs, were for the priests and priestesses. To study and pray? <clears throat> to hide away in the dark. Finally, you reach the bottom of the path, the deep below the complex. A stone door stands before you, but it's been cracked. You squeeze through the opening and find yourselves in a vast chamber, piled wall to wall with ancient treasures. I can't believe this has been here all along. If we had explored this place ourselves, we, we could have been... Become... He catches Scholar Vash, glaring at him. Ridiculously a boyish adherence of the light? Vash approaches, a pedestal scattered with golden chains and goblets. He plucks a large green crystal from the size of, of a watermelon from the pile. Ooh, pretty. That is distinctly not an onyx. You got the strange green crystal. <clears throat> no, it's not the shard, but it's still quite fascinating. I must bring it back to White Tower with me for further study. Everyone is distracted looking at the treasure. Even Nears, gobbing over a jewel-crusted old tome. I can't believe it. How is this here all the time? No one ever robbed it? Maybe no one knew it was here. I mean, we lived a day away, and we had no idea. Yeah, well, it's pretty, but I don't like it one bit. If the people who murdered Angus and Grin weren't after this treasure, then what are they after? The Onyx Shard. We'd better keep moving. At the far end of the room sits a heavy wooden door, fortified by twisted metal ruins. Scholar Vash examines it closely. Ah, yes, the ancient animals often used elaborate mechanisms to lock their secrets away. I've always wanted to solve one. They test your deep knowledge of Elephlin logistics. That sounds riveting. Mmm, seems quite simple. If I just press this and turn there... Nothing happens. Oh, well, I may need a moment. Ball Vash futzes with the panel. Kate coughs, drawing your attention. Psst, Rain! While he's busy with that, what do you say we keep scooping out this treasure chamber? I think there's some hidden rooms down the back. We could go check them out. See what else this place has to offer. Oh, I would be interested in that. I thought I saw some fascinating statues. This side quest will let you explore the ruins with Nia and Kate. Fight a surprising enemy and collect a valuable relic. Side quest. The Hall of Gods. Why not? That sounds way better than just sitting around here. Let's take a quick look around and see what we can find. While Vash continues tinkering with the door, now rubbing some kind of dry powder over the joint, the three of you head deeper into the vault. So, Nia, why is all this treasure here? Well, these are offerings. Believers used to bring them as tribute to their gods. Like bribes? People paying off the gods to grant them fortune and favor? No, it's not like that. The offerings are eventually voluntarily, and no expectation of reward. They're a reflection of gratitude, of thankfulness. Huh. That seems, um... Yeah, I'm gonna go with Wasteful. Uh, wasteful? I'm just saying, think of how many people this gold could have fed. Think of how many sick and wounded and vulnerable it could have provided for. And instead it just sits here, lost and forgotten. Just another ruin. He pauses, steep in thought. I do see your point. There is much practical good that comes from this wealth, but there are other concerns and material. Faith and devotion, for example. It's not enough to live. It's a question of what you live for. So you should throw coins at your god? 
We starting that song now? Tell that to everyone who's starving. Hey, looks around, shaking his head. I know rationality, I should be way more scared given we're in an ancient temple and we just found two people brutally murdered. But I still can't really believe this is happening. We're on an adventure, a real adventure. Imagine what an amazing story this will make. You really love telling stories, don't you, Cade? Well, yeah, stories are really important to me. They're how I see the world. He hesitates for a second, an oddly sentimental expression on his face. I was really sickly, kid. Bedridden, till I was six, on the brink of death. The stories were all I had. I read every book in town. When I ran out of books to read, I started writing them. Kate was a... Okay, what cog is kid? I always thought that was how I'd live life. Rain was the adventure, the dreamer. I was happy just to read about the things like that. But maybe I misjudge myself. Maybe I can be someone who goes out there and who has adventures, who sees the world. Maybe I can be a hero. You're a bard, shut up. Damn right you can, brother. Look, over there, a passage. Falling me into a vast hall lined with ancient marble statues, mostly crumbled. This is a hall of gods. It must be hundreds of years old. Gaze from one statue to another, taking them in. Hmm, I'll take a look at the majestic elven goddess. Two lovers intertwined. A dark-winged warrior. Walk over to an ominous statue at the end of the room. A winged monstrous warrior clutching a spiked club. Nia follows you warily. I don't know this one. It isn't one of the gods I recognize. Hmm, you don't know all the gods? If... You go back far enough, you'll find different pantheons and interpretations, but I've never heard of one like this. Stare the warrior's brooding expression, the way his marble eyes seem to simmer with hate. Hmm, I don't like it. Me neither. Hey, wanna see something hilarious? Cade holds up an old ceramic vase with a creepy face painted on its side, but as he tries to copy its expression, it slips through his fingers and shatters. Oops. The shards shake and rattle, and a spectral shape bursts out, lashing through the air with tendrils of smoky flame. Oh. Now we went and did it. What in the hell is that? The creature pulses and swells, its hungry eyes boring into you. Um... I have Nia do something? I'll try. She raises her hand, a blast of hot magic light streaking out of her fingers. But the creature is subtly unfazed. <sighs> it's not working. Wait a minute. I know what this is. It's a Vorgolin. I read about it in the Tome of Beasts, the traveling the merchant had. It's a specter that feeds off psychic energy, specifically fear. So, what if we feel other strong emotions? Could that drive it away? Actually, yes, that just might work. Think about something other than fear. Quick, think of a time when you felt something really uh, intense. <sighs> Promising you turn to the Vorglin. I'm gonna think of my happiest memory ever. Close your eyes, remember a day, a year ago, one perfect day. Cade and I had a great time at the Riverbend Fair. I impressed the blacksmith and won a prize. The whole town cheered for us, and I felt so loved and safe. The Vorgolin pulses, gorging on your emotions. It lets out a satisfied wheeze. Uh, something falls off its body, landing with a hard thun. The Vorgan wavers and fades away, vanishing into thin air. You cautiously approach what fell out of the Vorgolin and nudge it with your toe. It's a golden ball. It's a solid gold. Oh, then we're lucky. When a Vorglin is fed emotions it doesn't enjoy, it transforms him into an elemental discharge. It's usually iron or brass, but gold jackpot. Are you saying that orb is the creature's waste? Could you imagine going to the toilet and pooping gold? My god, I'd be rich. It literally craps gold. Yes! You all share a laugh as Cade picks up the orb and tucks it in his bag. Are you, uh, alright with us keeping this precious? It, it's not an offering, and it might be worth quite a bit. I 
suppose. Well, now, now then, we should probably get back before Scholar uh, Vosh realizes we're gone. The three of you head back to Vosh, who's just as he traces a final rune, and the door opens with a whoosh. Mm, there you go, a piece of cake. As I said, nothing to it. He looks back at you. Mm, thank you for waiting patiently. I do hope you wasn't involved, though. Three of you glance at each other. Not at all. Vash gestures ahead, and you walk towards the door. Wait, does anyone else hear that voice? You motion for the others to be quiet as you lead them into the next chamber. What is that? A glowing metallic box hovers above a pedestal in the chamber center. Segments of the box expand, rotate, shift back in, like a puzzle working itself out. Ooh, so like a Hellraiser cube. Alright, I accept this. Around it shifts and warps with a low hum. Now can energy feel the steel intact, good? Ancient protection holds. A group of burly men in rough leather armor enter the far end of the chamber, battered iron swords hanging at their sides. The group quickly ducks into the shadows behind several crumbling columns. Cade whispers frantically to you. Look at your swords! Is that blood? I think we just found our killers. The thugs approach the metallic box, but none of them seem to want to get too close until a familiar voice steps forward, motioning towards the box. There it is, see? Just like I told you. Now could you stop pointing that sword at my back? It's Mal. That's the adventurer you met? What are you doing with those men? I think he's their prisoner. The thug's leader raises his blade and levels it at Mal's neck. That's not the deal. Work faster, thief, if you value your life. The attackers must have kept him alive because he knows how to open that box. The end arrows. Our eyes widen in horror. That poor man. Right, we have to help him. We will. Once we get an opening, we need to figure out what they're up to first. At the side, Mal approaches the box, squinting at it as it cycles through its shifting rotations. Hmm. Thag presses a sword to Mal's back again, making him wince. I said hurry up, scum. Open the chest already. Don't get your small claws in a bunch, my friend. I'm opening a 2,000-year-old relic, not picking the pockets in the bazaar. I know it's hard to believe, but even Mal the Magnificent finds himself challenged every once in a while. Mal the Magnificent? Look, I'm still workshopping it. I can't commit to a, to a moniker too quickly. Oh, okay. <laughs> the walls tremble, spilling dust as a hideous voice booms through the chamber. Shadows swirl, coalesce behind Mal, solidifying into a towering being made of shadow and metal. Oh. Hello, Lord of the Rings reject. How are you? He sweeps forward, towering over the band of mercenaries. A giant blade strapped to his back crackles with dark energy. Light save us. Next to you, Cade goes deathly pale, his hands trembling. It's... It's Duke Arthrax. A, a Duke of the Shadow, Cordy. He, he's real. He's... He's actually real. You told me stories about him, but didn't he die thousands of years ago? I'm telling you, Rain, it's him. We need to go now. The legends are a warning we should heed. What did the legend say about Duke Earthrax again? He's one of the corrupted elves who serve the Death Lord. Mal wriggles his fingers, waiting. Then his two gears click in a place on the chest. That he swoops in and spins a dial. Getting closer now. Arthrax speaks, his voice deep and haunting, like dust blowing out of a tomb. Do not set off the trap, thief. I wasn't exactly planning to. Scowls and continues tinkering with the chest, a strand of hair falling over his eyes. He pushes it away and locks eyes with you.
wink at him. Really? He wipes away his look of surprise and gives you a tiny conspiratorial nod in return. I sure hope he knows what he's doing. Arcane field is fading! Mal locks one last gear into place, and the force field shivers away. The chest lid glides open, bathing the chamber in an eerie teal glow. Now, what do we have here? He reaches inside with a cloth wrapped hand and carefully lifts out a rough black gemstone. Shadows swirl within its heart, making your stomach churn. There it is at last. Give it to me. Sure thing, but first, I thought you might like this. He slams his fist into a button on the side of the chest. Arrow shoot from the wall, skewering thugs holding him captive. Ugh! As the thugs fall, Mal charges towards your hiding place, still clutching the gem. Go, kid, go, 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 go! Fool! Duke Earthrax fires a bolt of darkness your way. The shadows, shadowy blast clips a nearby column, sending stones flying. Mal dives, narrowly avoiding them. Ugh! The shard flies from his hand and skids across the temple floor, coming to rest right in front of Cain. You're not getting your hands on the shard today, Earthrax! Wait, don't touch it with your bear! But it's too late. Cade lunges for the stone. As his fingers close around it, the onyx shard pulses with violent energy. The air warps, stretches, writhing with shadows that wrap around Cade. Rain! Helm! And rest in peace, brother. And then he's sucked into a void. The onyx shard clatters back to the ground, with Cade trapped inside. Cade! The shard has taken him! Oh, he's in the rim of shadow now. There's nothing we can do for him. I'm not leaving him. Quick thinking, you tear a scrap of your shirt off and wrap it up the shard, making sure you avoid touching it with your bare hands. It feels hot and cold at the same time, pulsing with a strange energy. But the cloth keeps you safe. Good thinking. Now run! Run off! Shadow spiral from Earthrax's palms, knitting themselves into a pair of sla slavery, snarly, shadowy hounds. <sighs> oh, come on, he can do that! Nia grabs your hands and pulls you forward. We can't stay here, Rain. We have to go! You race through the treasure room with Nia and Schuller, Vosh, Mal falling close behind. They're big baddie hounds. It's no use. The hounds are gaining on us. Up ahead, you see a low hanging beam blocking your path. Smash through it. Slide under it. Look for another way. Slide under it. Duck low, sliding clean under the beam. Quick thinking. Slides after you, followed by the others. You rush out into the temple courtyard, but a hound leaps down from a crumbling pedestal, teeth barred in its snarl. <sighs> Beast of darkness, by the power of Lysandra, I banish you. Bracelet on Nia's raised glows, dazzling light blasts out of her hands, spearing through the hound. It rise and howls before bursting apart into a cloud of black fog. She defeated the Shadow Hound with light magic. Nice one, Nia. I had the light's help. It was nothing. <clears throat> you just run across the stone, but as you round a corner, a hound pounces on Vash and pins him to the ground with its vicious claws. Help, please! Scholar! The rock at it, distract it. Kick the hound. Well, this isn't Mortal Kombat, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw a rock at it. Snatch up a piece of rubble and hurl it right between the shadowy hound's eyes. It backs away from Vash, stumbled into a daze. Before it can regain its bearings, you fling another piece of rubble at it, smashing in its head with a miserable howl. The beast dissolves into shadow. Quick, let's go. Vash staggers up. Weak on his feet, his left leg torn bloody. We'll have to carry him. Mal, give me a hand. Mal looks at you 
at Vash, and then at the exit, clearly thinking of just running. Mal, help. You meet your gaze with an exasperated sigh. Ah, oh, I was... I am going to regret this, aren't I? Mal rushes over to you, and you drape one of Vash's arms over each of your shoulders. Here, yeah, we must get you to safety. Don't worry about me, Shalar. Let me tend your wounds and... Uh, before she can finish, a jagged black lance bursts through Vash's side. Oh! No! Duke Earthrack slooms out of the darkness, dragging another lance against the stone. Sparks fly off the metal. Mortals, you cannot escape the Shadow Court's judgment. Keep running, go! Mal shifts Vash's weight onto you and draws a dagger, twirling it as he turns towards the Duke. What are you doing? You asked for help, yeah? So here I am, saving our lives. Every good treasure hunter knows how to dodge traps, but you don't know how to- you can't dodge them without knowing how to first set them off. He hurls the dagger. Okay, I like the artwork. It blurs through the air before embedding itself in the stone archway above Duth Earthrax's head. Boom. The temple rumbles and the floor shakes beneath you. The archway and then the entire ceiling collapses right on top of Duth Earthrax. No! Get those legs moving, people. We're officially blowing this joint. You flee deep into the forest, taking a searchous route away from the main road to cover your tracks as night descends you stake out a safe clearing near a stream. Alright, I think we lost them for now. You and Mal ease Skull Vash to the ground and prop his head up with a bedroll. He's breathing hard, his skin clammy and pale from the blood loss. Please, Skolar. Let me treat you. Save your energy, priestess. There are... These are no normal wounds. The rot of darkness has infected me. No, you'll be fine. You just need your wounds cleaned and a proper night's rest. As the adrenaline wears off, reality hits you in a devastating rush. You sag against a tree trunk. Reef threatening to overwhelm you. Cade. Cade's gone. He's really gone. Trapped in that damned onyx shard. Kate has left the party. As you blink away tears, Mal starts to back away. Alright then, seems like everyone can use some space. I'll just set up camp and... Not so fast. Mal the Magnificent? Mal groans. I was improvising, okay? Trying to stall for time. Please tell me that's not gonna stick. I forget the nickname. You better start explaining what's going on here. Fast. I don't like your tone, Kit. Just this Kit just saved your life. What, back there, please? I had it handled. Look, just... <sighs> Tell me what happened to my brother. Where is he? How do I get him back? How in the three hell should I know? Because you sure seem to know a lot about that shard back at the temple. I'm a treasure hunter. That means I know where to find treasure, and I know you sure as hell don't touch magical relics with your bare hands. What is it? Or what anyone wants with it. I don't get paid enough for that. If you say so. But you're not going anywhere until we find out what happened to my brother. And how exactly do you plan on doing that? I think we should take the Shard to White Tower with Nia and the Shoulder Vash. Surely someone there will know what to do. White Tower. No way, kid. I recovered the shard at great personal risk. That means it's mine now. To do with as I please. 
and I pleased to sell it to the highest bidder, put this whole mess behind me, preferably somewhere warm and with good drinks. Charm him, played with him, threaten him. I'm assuming plead would work, but we'll go with charm. Really? That's the legend you want to build for yourself? What are you talking about? I'm just saying, you seem like a man who cares about reputation. This could be a real blow to that. Mal, the great adventurer who carelessly left an innocent young man trapped in the Shadow Realm, putting his own greed first. That's how you want people to know you? At least they'll know me at all. You take a confident step towards him. Sure, but what if they knew you as Mal the Hero, who brought a pure soul back from the Shadow Realm? Mal the Hero, who saved the world? I know exactly what you're doing, kid. You're trying to play me. I see right through you. And also, it, it's working. Of course it is. I can be very persuasive. Mal lets out a sigh. I'll think about it, alright? But only for the glory. It'll all be yours. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go get us some food. By yourself. Yeah, I saw some good looking berries on the way here. Figure I can get us something to eat. I could go with him. Might be a good way to learn more about who he really is. This is a side quest. We'll let you get closer to Mal. Oh, and you might even find an item that will he can heal any injuries you take. Side quest, the Lonely Road. I should go with you. I like how he was smiling and then his smile got bigger. No way, kid. I work way better alone. But I'm a good forager. I've been with uh, just Cade and me for most of our lives. I've learned a thing or two about fending for myself. You two grew up all on your own? No one else back home? A farmer took us in, but we were mostly alone. Stares at you, then sighs deeply. Uh, Alright, fine. Then I'll go faster with the two of us. But don't get in my way. Wouldn't dream of it. I found some good mayberry bushes and mushroom clusters on the way to, out to the temple. I'm dying for ripe eleven fruit right about now. I'll keep an eye out for eleven tree. I'll lead you to deeper into the woods. Starlight glitters in the gapes of the leaves overhead. And owls hoot gentle lullabies. Woohoo! It's so peaceful out here. Hard to believe we were facing down a Duke of Shadow just a few hours ago. That's how I like it. Thrills, adventure, with just every uh, enough to time to catch my breath in between. Spy a cluster of wild mushrooms growing on the side of an ancient oak tree. Look, hint of the woods. The tavern cook back home fries these up with some butter and herbs. You've been out of your town two whole days and you already miss it. Maybe a little. Cade would have missed it more. He... Your voice catches and you clear your throat, turning away from Mal. You harvest the mushrooms and place them carefully in your satchel. So what exactly do you do as a treasure hunter, anyway? Planning to become my competition. I'm keeping my options open. I mainly travel the kingdoms looking for relics from the old re reign. Golden goblets and dusty tombs, gilded swords lying deep in ogre caves. You've faced ogres. I've stolen from them while they were sleeping. Even I don't have that much of a death wish. Sometimes I'm hunting down something specific for a collector, but usually I'm chasing my own leads. You make a good living that way. Good enough to pay the tavern bill anyway. Seriously? What can I say? I've got expensive tastes. It sounds like you're lonely. Yeah, well, I didn't get into this business to make friends. I have made plenty of enemies, though. Do you ever dream of settling down, establishing a home of your own? 
When you grow up like I did, home is a luxury you can afford. Never saw much point in staying in the same place. Sounds like a great way for your past to catch up to you, if you ask me. Yeah, well, I think you could use some companionship. You offer to be my sidekick? I was thinking more of a partner. Now pauses, eyebrow caught. Partner. Now there's a word with connotations. I know, that's why I picked it. Mal clears his throat, glancing away. Ryan. Mal plucks a ripe mayberry from a bush and offers it to you. Hmm, my favorite. You eat the berry in one gulp and wipe away the juice from your chin with a smile. So what exactly uh, happened at the temple? What happened to Angus and Grin? It was a paying job. This collector from the Cape Fallon got in touch with me, offering a hefty purse if I got some peace out of a tumble. He didn't tell you what the artifact was? No. He just said it was an ancient artifact, very powerful, don't touch it. I kind of stopped listening after that. Are you? Are you serious? Not when I can help it. So I came down here, hired some local muscle just in case, went to check the temple out. Shadow Duke and his bastard squad hit us as hard as soon as we got there, took out your friends before we could even draw our blades. They were going to kill me too, but I managed to convince them not to, on account of my being devilishly handsome. You hold your arms and raise an eyebrow at him. Okay, the fact that I'm good at disarming traps. And you don't know anything else about the men who attacked you. I got no idea, kid. And I don't want to. Mm, I think you're hiding something. Mal throws his hands in the air. You can believe whatever you want, but I'm telling you, that's all I know. Look at me. Look at this face. Is this not the face of an honest, forthright man? Definitely not. Look, I'm no scholar, but I'm starting to get the idea that I'm in over my head on this one. If that shard's half as bad as it looks, I don't even want to be on the same continent as it. Not even for a hefty pouch of gold? Gold solves a lot of problems, but only if you're alive to spend it. A lot of jobs I take are like that, though. Someone with more money than sense wants some pretty shiny chunk of the past. And then they don't want anyone else to know they have it. I didn't think anything of it until those bastards attacked. And the chances are good if they know what the shard is, they're going to be pretty careful about covering their tracks. As you're stepping into a clearing, a majestic tree rises before you. The moon shines off the large emerald fruit peeking out of its canopy. Jackpot. Eleven tree. See those pretty fruits up at the top? Kind of hard to miss. They look as big as my head. Juiciest suckers in the realm. But it's a real pain to get them. He looks meaningfully from you to the tree, grinning broadly. Unless you uh, can get someone else to do the work for you. So you think you can get them down? Okay, only if you give me a boost. He lifts his hands and a carefree shrug. Oh, I see how it is. You've seen my hands in action, now you want to feel it. You take a step forward, eyebrow raised and challenge. Please, I'm just making sure you don't get out of doing all the work. Besides, you're the one who should be honored to touch me. I don't know, honor's not really my thing, in case you haven't noticed. Still, he places his hands on either side of your waist as he meets your gaze, he wings. You're a lot of trouble, kid, but you're my kind of trouble. I could say the same about you. Then we're two peas in a pond. Ready? One, two, up you go! He hoists you up into the branches of the eleven tree. You grab one of the sturdy limbs and start to climb. You skin warm where Mal's hands have been. Make sure you get enough for everyone. Your fingertips brush the jeweled skin and eleven fruit. Stretch out carefully, you're still gripping the tree. And tug it free. Catch! You chuck it down to Mel, who curses and stretches an arm out, barely catching him. Watch it, they bruise easily. You snort and toss another fat, ripe fruit down in the Mal's waiting arms. 
All right, I think we've earned ourselves a feast. And come on down now. You descend the lemon tree's branches and drop down to the ground in front of Mel, who looks impressed. I wasn't sure what to make of you at first, Rain, but you're uh, pretty resourceful. Who knows? Someday you might even be as clever and crafty as me. You bump a shoulder with your own as you head back to the campsite, taking some of the fruit from him. And maybe someday you'll learn a little humility. Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Back at the clearing, Nia and Scholar Vash are both asleep by the fire. Nia has bandaged Vash and is curled protectively near him. He looks better now that he's all cleaned up. Do you think? Only time will tell if he's healed. We've done all we can. He takes a seat on a nearby log and motions for you to join him. Might as well enjoy the fruits of our labor. They can have their share for breakfast. As you bite an eleven fruit juice dribbles down your chin, they taste sweet and tangy, so much richer than anything you've ever eaten before. Mmm, these were totally worth the work. I thought you might like it. And there's uh, one more neat trick I've got up my sleeve. Mal spits the pit to the fruit into a tin cup and holds it over the fire. It bubbles and pops, dissolves into a shimmering rainbow fluid. What just happened? Most folks don't know about this, but you can melt down the pit of eleven fruit to get a cell. It's a powerful medicine. Heals cuts right up. Mal pours into a little bottle and hands it to you. You got the healing cell. Hold on to it. If you get injured, you can use it to heal up. Thanks, Mal. Mm, there's so much wonder and beauty in the realm's reign. It'd be a shame if you didn't get to experience it all. You enjoy a few more bites in silence as you stare off into the darkness of the forest. It'd be a shame not to experience the world, but... I only wish Cade could be here to enjoy it with me. Mal reaches out to pat you on the shoulder, but stops himself at the last minute. His voice gains an edge of seriousness. We'll get your brother back, I'm sure of it. I hope you're right. The next morning. You waken first at sunrise. Mal rests against a distant tree, keeping watch while Nia and Vash rest gently on their bedrolls. Or Vash. Stretch out, and that's when you notice something lying, half concealed in the brush. A small, old tablet. Something about it calls to you. Promises of an ancient mystery unravel. Perhaps... Huh. Looks like this is all about orcs, elves, and humans. Lots of interesting lore. This is a lore tablet. Oh, mother of Christ. Collect them all to learn about the world, inhabitants, and the history of the Great War. You'll also get bonus EXP for every tablet you collect, and if you get all six, you'll unlock a bonus scene. If you get all six, you'll get a secret decoder ring. What? Listen, I thought that was clever. Secret decoder ring. Let's do this. Yes, we leveled! Rar. I am now level two. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's level three. That's right. You started at level one. Okay, so we have survival, combat, diplomacy. Um, so you're allowed to pick your tiers. Okay, very interesting. I'm liking this so far. Um, I feel like I feel like to survival for right now. Let's go with survival. Oh, we can return to categories, too. Woods lore. Okay, hold on. I want to go back. I want to return to categories. Hold on. Combat. And then there's bows and brawling. Return to categories. And then there is seduction and deception. Ooh. These are really good ones. These are really, really good ones. I'm going to go... I'm actually going to stick with diplomacy, and I'm actually going to go with deception. Diplomacy, as I've learned from any game that you guys have ever watched me play, yeah. Diplomacy, talking, you know, things like that are always key. We need, now need 100 EXP. Pick up the tablet, turning it over in your hands. <clears throat> Read about humans. Oh lord, there is so much to read. Here we go. Humans are the dominant sentient species in the kingdom of Morelia. Smaller than orcs and shorter than elves, they are phys most physically distinguished by their agility. 
Magical affinity is rare among humans. Less than 1 in 1,000 possess the gift, and most of those that do so quickly adopted by one of the major temples. Human culture. Humans of Morelia are organized in a traditional monarchy. The seat of power is with the king in the capital city, who carries out his will with through two dozen local lords. Even though one kingdom, human culture is divided into many subcultures and groups, from the decadent nobles of White Tower to the seafaring rogues of Pernicius. If there's one consistent trait to humanity, it might be their inconsistency. Human history. Two thousand years ago, during the era of the Elven Empire, humans were largely a servant castle of to the elves acting as laborers and farmers for the many elven houses. However, after the elven civilization fell in the Great War, humans flourished. They took over many of the elven cities and manors and quickly created an impressive civilization of their own. About 500 years, Morelia was divided into two dozen fiefdoms constantly at war. But this period of darkness and chaos ended when the lords of White Tower triumphed, conquering the territories one by one to create a unified dynasty. Since then, the Valorius Dynasty from White Tower has ruled over the humans of Morella, barring the occasional civil war and peasant uprising. King Arlen Ferlos VII currently sits on the throne, known as the Gentle King. Arlen has reigned over a period of great peace and prosperity. He has two sons, Baldur and Aaron. I don't trust Baldur. I have reasons. Many reasons. Many games. Or characteristics. Orcs are the largest and strongest of the sentient species of Morelia. The average orc stands six and a half feet tall and has muscle mass of most well-built of humans. Orc possess a tremendous physical strength. Their strongest can be bend steel with their bare hands and withstand extreme heat and cold. Female orcs are stronger than males, which, given the emphasis on physical prowess in their culture, means most orcish fleets are matriarchal. Magic use in the orcs is extremely light, rare. Less than 1 in 10,000 orcs is capable of magic. Culture. Orcs are nomad species. We lay no roots is a fundamental principle of the orcish culture, and one held deeply by all clans, travel, adventure, and the thrill of conquest. These are values orcs hold dear. Orcs are a seafaring race. They are divided into 12 fleets, each made of several hundred members. Orcs do not worship gods like the humans or elves, rather they worship elements of nature, ocean, sky, stars, moon. Orc History According to the Orcish legend, they hail from a land far to the east, a continent known as Keldahana, the world that was there. They once had a massive civilization, an empire that puts the kingdom of Morella to shame. After Keldahana, has destroyed in a great volcanic eruption, the orcs who survived took to the seas and vowed to always keep moving, never settle, and never grow beyond their means. In the past, the twelve orcish fleets acted independently even in conflict, but ten years ago they were united under the leadership of Ventra Tel Kalin, who formed an alliance and established a capital, the floating city of Flotilla. Okay, it looks like we have elves and others left. Elf characteristics. <clears throat> My voice is killing me right now. Elves are taller than humans, standing an average of just over six feet tall. Elves possess incredible senses, capable of seeing the tiniest drops of dew on a blade of grass and hearing a whisper two rooms away. Elves are also long-lived. The average elf lives to be 300 years old. They reach maturity at about 50, and they maintain their appearance until their oldest years. All elves possess some degree of magic affinity. From an early age, elven children are sorted into magical schools, which train their talents from green naturalists to purple illusionists to black battle mages. I want to be a mage. Why can't I be a mage? After the Great War, there are only 500 or so elves left alive. Outside of a handful of exiles and outcasts, they all live in a city of Undermount in the north. An incredibly complex hierarchy exists among all elven houses, with an ever-shifting ladder of rank and wealth. Social competition is a cornerstone of elven society, and many elves spend their whole entire lives trying to advance, standing in their house. Elf History The elven empire was once the greatest in the world, a glorious civilization spanning Morelia and beyond, and for a thousand years, elves lived in peace and prosperity. Their society was built on magic, and magic elevated them to greatness. But their magic was also their downfall. Their pursuit of ever greater power opened a doorway to the realm of shadow and the dark powers therein. The great war began, and a hundred years later, the elves were all but wiped out. 
The only survivors were those sheltered in the Great Sanctuary of Undermount. For nearly four centuries, they sealed themselves away, refusing all contact from the outside world. Now, elves have somewhat reluctantly reopened their gates. Undermount exists in odd political space. While it exists within the boundaries of Morelli, the humans have no jurisdiction over it, and it operates as an autonomous city-state. And finally, others. Orcs, elves, and humans are the primary sentient species in Morelia, but there are a few others of note. The amphibious Grobtars live in the ocean depths. Little is known of their culture, save unreliable accounts from captured sailors, but they are feared for their vicious, merciless attacks on traveling ships. So basically, murlocs, or naga. The vampire live in the crypts of the ruined city of the Necropolis. Some believe the blood-sucking immortals to be cursed elves. Others think they're just not living at all, but ghosts made for flesh. Given that no traveler has ever made it out of the city alive, perhaps we'll never know. Ah, but there are more. There are many others as well. The Mermen of the Shimmering Islands, the Mole People of the Red Desert, the legendary birdmen of the north. Some even believe that the Drachna, horrifying as they are, are sentient and have a secret society in the Deadwood. And we are done. Lord, thank you. When you're done, you tuck the tablet in your bag just as Schuller Fash stirs away. Hmm, okay. You got a lore tablet. Who knows how many we'll get of those. Oh, boy. Oh, you too? Vash, you're awake. Did the sleeping draught help? Oh, you did your best, dear priestess. But I'm afraid I don't have long. He raises a shirt, and you can see that all of his veins are running black. A spider web of inky darkness. Oh. The dark days have returned. You must save your strength. The Shadow Court seeks to return to our realm to enslave and conquer once more. As Vash talks, you find yourself drifting off, almost seeing what he's describing. Two thousand years ago, the Ills were thriving people, spreading peace and enlightenment across the realms. Their magic was unmatched, fueling all civilizations. But a cabal of rogue elves became greedy. They turned away from Kring King Zasis, seeking to live forever. And in their pursuit of immortality, tapped into another dimension, a world of pain, darkness, the realm of shadow. When King Zasis learned what they had done, a civil war ensued, devastating the elven kingdom. Hundreds of thousands were killed. They must be stopped, else their darkness would consume us all. The rogue heroes were banished at great cost to the realm of shadow. They became known as the Shadow Court. Wrapped, furious, they waited for Melindia to make their return. Here we keep panning the Duke, I get it. The Church of Light was founded to keep them at bay. We were entrusted with their cursed artifacts, guarding them in sacred temples. But as the centuries have rolled on, the old war has been forgotten, relegated to myth and legacy. The church itself has faded, as temples have crumbled. If the shards remain, the power growing as the light wanes, reaching out to vulnerable minds, corrupting them, enticing them, bringing us closer and closer to an age of darkness. <coughs> Please help. Voice dark. Tell us about the Shadow Court. There are a band of 25 rogue heroes who defy the natural order in search of greater power. Duke Earthax is one of them. Rotus warrior of great powers. He's found a way to manifest in our realm. More may soon follow. And none worse than their leader, the Dreadlord. Tell us about the Onyx Shards. The Onyx Shards are four powerful relics from the Red War. The have been infused with terrible dark energy, capable of corrupting the minds and unleashing devastating power. I fear the Shadow Court is using them as conduits to corrupt mortals and serving them and gain entry into the mortal realm. Can we stop this? If you collect all the shards, you can take them to the Temple of Light for purification ritual. It will burn away the dark energy stored within them, 
and render them useless to the Shadow Court. In addition to the shard you have, there is one with the dimmer light in White Tower with the High Priests. The other two have been lost. One has been seen within the library at the Port Parnassus, and the other resides in the remaining Elves deep in the heart of Undermount. And what about my brother? Is there a way to bring him back? I, I do not know, child. If anyone knows of a way, it would be the High Priest at the Temple of Light. There are ways to bring someone back from the Realm of Shadow, but only if they have resisted the Pool of Darkness. Your brother must. Vash lapses into a coughing fit, blood splattering down its front. Cade must what? As his cough subsides, Vash sinks against his bedroll. His voice rasps out, barely more than a whisper. You lean down over him and reaches up, grasping your hand. Purify the shards. Stop the court. Keep me safe. His eyes close with one last sigh as hand goes slack and Nia's tears roll down her face. Color of Ash, no, please. You can't. You can't leave me. You gently lay a hand on her shoulder and offer a soothing squeeze. Nia, I'm so sorry. She pulls away from Bash and buries her face against her shoulder. I knew him better than I knew my own parents. He taught me everything. You pat her back, letting her sob. Then you're a living testament to him. His soul, his teachings, they live on with you. And every day, you honor his memory by carrying on his work. Nia manages a weak smile that trembles at the corners. You're right. That's a beautiful way to think of it. But it still hurts. She wipes away her tears and looks at you and Mal with a new fire burning in her eyes. We have to complete Vash's mission. With the rest of the Anik Shards, we can stop the Shadow Court and ensure they never harm anyone else. Mal, Rain, will you join me? No way, Priestess. Getting you to safety was my good deed for the year, but this is uh, your quest on mine. There's nothing in it for me. Well, if existential threat to the entire realm isn't enough to convince you, I'm sure the temple's coffers can. See, now you're speaking my language. I've seen the Temple of Light in White Tower. Those coffers run deep. I can promise you a sizable fortune in exchange for your service. Not to mention the glory of defeating the Shadow Corn. Just think of your reputation. All right, fine. I'll help for now. Let me guess. Mal has joined the party. And Rain? You don't even have to ask. We're gonna see this, Zero. It's my fault Kate is trapped in the Shadow Room. I'll do anything to get him out. Your journeys just begin! Will you find the shards and save Kate, or will the Shadow Court reign? Tear once more! Please reign, Tear. I need tear. We need more tear. Please? Please, shut up, court win? I mean, what? Without further ado, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now, description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, make sure that you hit that bell icon to receive notifications. If you don't, you will miss out on, I don't know, pretty much everything. Seriously, YouTube has a really cuckoo for caca, for Cocoa Puffs, you know, algorithm that um will not allow you to watch my content. So, that's just, it, you won't receive notifications. You'll just be like, whatever happened to that one YouTuber I used to watch? And you'll just be like, oh well. Anyway, once again, thank you all for watching. Give me criticism or whatnot down in the comment section below. And, uh, uh, further ado, I will catch you all, hopefully, in the next video. Or, you can go to Twitch, where I stream. Peace, peace, peace. Much love.